want us to talk about this thing? Conflict resolutions. When is enough enough? In any relationship, there's bound to be conflict. One of the prayers that uh, any Christian should have is to ask God to make him humble. And as a, another way of looking at gratitude, because this is the theme that we have started talking about this year in our church calendar year and in my life, I said in the other show that I have purpose to make the rest of my life a life of gratitude and a life where I want to pass on that which God has given me. And I want us to work together as we think about that. Have you ever, I don't know which word to use, have you ever been embarrassed by your eye, for lack of a better word, by your accomplishment, I'm going to just find a minute. Uh, and especially those of us who have been fortunate enough to live in this country of free and the brave, and we go home and you're in a situation where you realize that you have and others don't have. There is this thing that you have and you realize that people around you don't have it whether it's education, whether it's even accomplishment in your life, success in business, having been a widely troubled person. Uh, I'll say this, and, I, and, and, and there's nothing wrong with how you feel it, but let me tell you what I do. I get not nervous, but I feel a little bit inadequate to have praises rained on me or, or to have a big difference between who I am and others. And I try to, to downplay that a lot. Uh, there are places, and there is nothing wrong with the people appraising your success and who you are. There is nothing wrong with people affirming your title. It's nothing wrong in people telling all those good things about you. But does it sometimes bother you a little when it is done in the midst of people who have not even scratched the service to be anywhere close where you are? I know some of you might be saying, so what do we do? Do we cry? Do we throw away what we have attained so that other people may feel comfortable? No, I'm not saying that. But, but there's an element where I sometimes feel like, uh, in other words, I, I am humbled by whatever story that is around me and what God has done in my life and how he's blessed me. And that humbles me. Can I confess to you, sometimes I find myself in my private uh, space almost weeping, not to almost, but, but just telling God, God, not why me, but in a way I'm humbled that out of many, there's me. And I always confess before God, and I am going even now as I talk about this, that God may forgive me where I may have acted to let other people appear like they don't know what they are doing or, be, or they are lazy. And there are people who are very, very good at doing that. 
And I pray that they will be humbled. You know very well there is this big gap between you and your friend or whatever you are. And you want to finish them by really portraying all those titles and the accomplishment. One day, I back in Kenya, the, there are people who are troubled by people when they don't recognize who they are. And I remember, I'm not going to tell you where, but one of the places I, I, I went, I think I served, somebody woke up and was trying to let people know that he was a guest. But it's the one thing that he did not want people uh, to miss. He said this, and I'm going to paraphrase. I'm so and so. You may have heard about me. Uh, by the way, I'm the one who has parked that car over there uh, because of the shade. I'm glad that you guys have nice tree outside the church because that car I bought. You know, there are not many, and this, I don't know why these people are making this kind of car with such roof, because, you know, it's the new version of this, uh, but um, I'm really grateful for it, because it, it really cost me a lot, and uh, I don't even think there are more than a few people with that car in the city. I think if there will be, it's maybe me, and, so, and I'm like, Hello? You spend a lot of time telling us about your car than yourself. In other words, for them to justify, they must bring all those things so that you may not miss to know where they stand in the society. And there are people who get aggravated, they feel bad when you introduce them and you don't tell them about their titles and who they are. Oh Lord, you know sometimes it bothers me if I stood up and I said I'm the Reverend Dr. Gigi. Come on. I know Reverend is a title, it's an office, but for heaven's sake, Reverend means revered. Let people call you. Don't, don't start saying I'm a doctor because sometimes you may talk nonsense in terms of people and you've already said you're a doctor, you're this professor and then what you are saying doesn't much talk so that when people are done they will say that person must be learned because you're going to be measured by what you portray out there humility my friend and gratitude because that's what we're talking about that gratitude should yield the humility. And you know why it yields humility? It says this. I may be fortunate. And I am fortunate. That among many people. God has placed you in this situation. When you know that. And people are watching you and they are listening you and they think that you're from heaven or you are from this big family just remind yourself that other mothers had given birth to sons and daughters and they would love for them to be in your position so as we show gratitude to god and telling people thank you for Trusting me with your life, it should humble you. Jesus was a master. He performed miracles. And one day, one of them called them, hey, good teacher. And he said, don't call me good. There's only one who is good. Our Father in heaven. He was quick to, you know, to, to make himself a servant. In fact, he said, I didn't come to be served. I came to serve. And on a previous episode, I talked about leaders in the political realm. And I said, is it 
power. Or is it service? And therefore, as I say this to you, I want to say I'm humbled to be who I am. To have served for 35 years ministry and God sustaining me at the of sound mind. You take it with humility. So that even as we show gratitude, as we tell God thank you, because the way we do it, the attitude we say it may portray arrogance or heroism because many of us want to feel that we have spoken, we are heroes, we are somebody. Don't push it. Don't force it. Let people affirm you. Let them will to do it. Let it come from the heart. Don't cut, don't, don't, don't cut and paste it. Right? Let it come natural. You know, back home when I was teaching high school, we had some folks from Uganda who came to teach and um, Oh Lordy, that was early 80s and uh, they had faked papers. And uh, one of them who had faked papers was te teaching English. Because the papers showed that he had gone to Makelele and uh, he had um, uh, evidence that he excelled in English, and so he was given English to teach at the secondary, secondary level. I was a deputy headmaster, but uh, as we were talking, there are some language was speaking English, and we are like, wait a minute, what did, did this guy say? You know, there's some grammar. I mean, English is a third language, and I understand we hope we can make mistakes, but there are some there are some sentences people can make. I don't know. Let me think of one. These people likes me. You know, okay. I know there are people who use that word. They don't. They are not aware. But if you are teaching high school English and you tell you know, oh, you know, these people likes me. And you are like, what did you say? English teacher? And you know, they had made everybody know they had gone to Makerele. And by the way, another teacher who had gone to Makerele in the South, they was, oh, by the way, you went to Makerele? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Which was your house? You know, like you go to the department and ask which, which, which dormitory or which house? He said, ah, don't, don't remind me about Makerele. It was not a very good oh by the way who was your professor and by the way as he was being sought he sneaked out because he was fake just for us to realize and he was giving students 85 90 95 and you know in kenya you could not get english 95 percent english and you are wondering why are these people passing english so well better than maths or other class anyway game short the title was huge. They wanted to command respect, but they did not earn it. What I'm trying to say is this. As we show gratitude, even when we tell of our success truly, let's do it with a lot of humility. Don't get offended when people don't recognize who you are. Don't keep telling story. When I was in Kenya, I was the DO, I was this, I used to do this. What are you trying to do? You're trying to let people know. Let people know your potential, your capability by your service. Let people wonder, who are you? What were you doing? Because the way you are behaving looks like you are a leader. 
let somebody come from outside and tell you, do you know this guy you're with? He was a district commissioner. And you're like, huh? No wonder he has this leadership. Oh, this guy who is among us too? He was a, a pastor back home. Oh, yeah? And here he's just calling himself a brother. Humility is very, very important, my friend. And if there is anything that is killing people, it's pride. When you have that condescending spirit that make other people look like they don't matter. You know what, my friend? This life is so short. And I wish that we can concentrate on doing those things that will help us in the next world we go to. So that even the legacy we live is humility. Because when you exercise humility, when you do that humble service, people will remember. There's one president I love. He's still alive. He's over 100 years. He was here. He was the president when I was here in the U.S. for high school, late 70s. Jimmy Carter. Jimmy Carter during the uh, Iran, you know, when they, ha they had the hostages in Iran. And by the way, when I was in high school, I was worried that I could be grafted because in America, when you are young and there's war, and I heard people talking about like, hey, guys, just in case there will be a war, you could be grafted. And I asked, what is that? Is that you could be recruited? And go and fight. Jimmy Carter was the president of the US. He served only one term. And I think the, the Iranian hostages crisis cost him, just like we think COVID 19 cost Trump <laughs> the first, when he wanted to, uh, to get the election in the first place. But Jimmy Carter, much as he was a president, the minute he finished his presidency, do you know what he went doing? He was a Sunday school teacher. Sunday school teacher, and by the way, those who are from Kenya, it's not the Sunday school we know, like going to teach kids. Sunday school here in America means more or less like a Bible study is Sunday school for adults where before the service you'd have a topic, you have a scripture exposition and all that. He went back to teach. He also, he also got involved in uh, Habitat for Humanity. He would go and help build homes for the homeless. This gentleman had been a president. He didn't go stay around. He went doing humble, serve, service to humankind. One day we were flying with my wife from Kenya. I think we had uh, the leg from Europe to America, I guess. And there was somebody greeting people in the plane. And uh, my wife from Mwangeshi said, who is this guy greeting everybody? And his face looks familiar. I turned. It was President Jimmy Carter. He was greeting people in the plane, humbling, saying, how are you? Very humble guy. And when I took classes at Emory University, when I was there, I went to, I don't know what we were doing in my little Michael, our son. Jimmy Carter was just passing because he used to teach there as well. Well, he used to be teach there. I was a student there taking philosophy at Emory University. And uh, he looked at Michael. Hey, young man. He greeted you. I keep telling Michael, Jimmy Carter, president, he was ex, greeted you. And this is also something special. I have to say this with humility. When I was in high school in South Dakota, the women in South Dakota wanted to said a present to President Jimmy Carter, and the present was a plate that had all the features, geographical features of South Dakota. But it happened that the president could not receive gifts. And it was returned and it was said, let somebody be given that plate in honor of the president. 
And I was the student from Africa. I got that play. Keep telling my mom, she saved that play because it has a lot of memory. Why am I talking about this? I'm talking about this to remind you that President Jimmy Carter, who has lived to see a hundred years, longevity. This is a president who had full of gratitude in his life. And he lived that gratitude life by serving, humbling himself, going to build people's homes. That is what maturity calls for. That is a mature Christian. And I want to urge all of us, my friends, as we live, let's be humble. Look for good in other people. Celebrate the little good they have. You know, humble yourself. If you think you are more intelligent than other people, don't, don't be arrogant. We have intellectual arrogance among our people just because you can articulate or you have the forum to do things, please be mindful about other people who cannot do what you cannot do. And do you know what will remind you to be humble? It's when you know that even what you have achieved was a gift. As we said in the previous show about that, I think it's 1 Corinthians 4, 7 that says, Nothing you have that you are not given. So don't pretend or act like you were born with it. I pray to God in my life that I will show humility. And I will continue repenting any time I feel that I'm in a situation where my display would make other people feel like they don't matter. That shakes me, that, that, that affects me. So it's a year of gratitude for us here at our church. And I wanna tell you, the minute you realize that it's a favor to be who you are, to have what you have, to be in a situation in which you are, it will humble you. And please don't you ever look other people down. Oh, pew, that person doesn't know how to use deodorant. You did not use it. You are taught. That person does not know how to wear clothes. When did you know how to wear clothes? You also were taught. When you go back home to Kenya or other place and you look people down and you are pretending like you cannot stay there. Remember, that is where you are hewn from. Your brothers, your sister, your parents, your neighbors are still in that condition. And let me tell you, it will only take a day for you to miss that deodorant and you will smell like them. That homeless person you look down, or that person that you castigate, you look down and you don't know why they are in that situation. Here in America, we say we are only two checks away from being homeless. That somebody who cannot walk is being helped at the hospital, and all you come saying as a nurse, you're complaining, I can't start this person. Oh my goodness, he's calling me every time to go and change diaper. My friend, they did not apply to be sick. You could find yourself there too. They don't choose. You may not be in that precarious situation. You know, may not be begging for food. You may be having cash. You may be having property one or two. But watch your mouth as you open your mouth to characterize others like they are lazy, they don't belong. 
And before you open your mouth to pass judgment, before you open your mouth to cast aspersion on other people's fate, watch it. My friend, you may not be lacking in what this person is lacking, but you have your story too. Humble yourself. See good in other people. Train yourself to be humble. And if somebody has some deficiency, be in prayer for them. That's the best you can do. If somebody gets into a force, into a situation, don't celebrate. Oh, look at this person. They have always said they are upright. Look at what is that. Don't. You could fight yourself there. So don't look other people down. Gratitude says, receive what you have with gratitude, with humility. Count yourself blessed. But even as you say it, don't let other people think that God hates them. Don't, don't act in a way that, that you're so smart. Get me right. I'm sure there are things you could have done right. I have no problem with that. But don't let other people feel like they don't belong to this world. There are people who have hated their lives. There are people who have actually resented God because of the way we depict ourselves like we came with all these things. My friend, when you leave this world, you'll be naked and some people will wash your body. You will not be able to open your eyes or even give any command. When you are gone, you are done and people will not even get close to you because of your status. You'll be something else. You're not going to be alive. You'll be forgotten. And people will be talking about the late. And after a year or so, they would be saying, oh, we remember so and so. You'll be forgotten. And the things that you have heard that you made, made them feel like you're everybody. It's going to be used by other people. I will have no control over it. So use it wisely. And with a lot of humility, my friend. Imagine if we were all humble. Imagine if we counted our blessings and say, how can we share whatever I have, including our intelligence? How can we be of help to those who are less fortunate? You walk five meters to go to the bathroom. But back home, remember, you ask a friend, a neighbor, your sister to get you to the lottery. You needed a, 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 a torch, as we would call it, to go out there and to get some leaves. You are scared. You warm the water in a karaya. And some of us use the same water in the evening to wash our feet. The same water. Two, three people. Some took in school three, four days without taking a shower. You are one of them. Maybe you are lucky. And when we saw bread, it was like a big thing. In fact, in school you had to take that bread cover like Elliot to go and cover your book so that people may know you had a, you had some bread. It was news. And here you are, we don't need it. You don't, here we are told not to eat too much bread because of our weight. We take a shower in that hot water, singing a song. Two, three, our kids take like an hour singing. Loudest music in the shower, hot. Bathroom, one, two, three, four, five step. Commode is there, you are done. You flush it. You have a carpet. The house is warm. Hakuna kuenda kutafta kuni. Gas at your reach. Power at your reach. Gali yako, ya muke wako, ya buwana yako, kama umyeloa, na ya watoto, magali mawili matatu, ya nangojea pale. And we just forget it was just the other year. When you came, you wondered, will I ever live like these people? 
then we, when you have it, and you go back to Kenya or other places, you have this attitude like you have always had it. Please show humility. Be humble. That's one way of showing gratitude because gratitude yields humility. Be humble. God bless you. Thank you.